Hey everyone, this is Gal. Today I'm going to be making a video on how to get started in Warhammer 40k. Now this video isn't meant for those who have been playing Games Workshop games for a while or are familiar with the game. This is actually directed against those people who have never played a Games Workshop game, they don't know anything about Warhammer 40k, they've just seen it around, they're kind of interested in playing. Now the first thing I'd recommend doing with this game is to pick up the box set Dark Vengeance. Here's a picture of it right here. Now this is a great way to get started. And to those people who have been playing Warhammer for a while, they probably say it's a bit of a no-brainer, but a lot of people who may be not exposed to Games Workshop very much may not know that this option is available. Now, the good thing about this set, and the reason I recommend it, is it comes with everything you need to get started. It comes with the rulebook, the travel version right here. Now, this is a great little thing, even if you've been playing Warhammer for a while, because I'll show you why. This is the main rulebook, and it's quite a tome. It's a beautiful book, but it's not just a rule book. It's also a resource of fluff and tons of information, and it's really just a huge book. And it can be quite cumbersome when you're trying to look up rules, so that's why I really recommend picking up the box and getting the little paperback. This one's very handy for when you're at the club trying to look up a quick rules because it's got all the rules of the game, much lighter weight, much easier to carry around, and it doesn't have all the fluff. You just look up your rules quickly and move on with the game. In addition to the rule book, it also carries everything else you need. It's got um, templates, it's got starting dice, as well as an introductory on how to play the game, and more importantly, it's got a starting force of models for you. Now what I have here is uh, the Space Marines in the box set, plus a couple extras that I'll get to. You'll have to forgive me, I haven't completely finished painting them yet, they're still a work in progress. And I'll show you them fully painted in a later video. But it has everything you need to get started right off the bat. Now, it's also got a set of chaos in the air. Now, I don't have mine put together or painted yet. It's a part of I'm saving for another day, so I'll show you the pictures on the box. It's got a beautiful chaos lord. It's got a couple squads of cultists. A unit of chosen, which are like bodyguards for the lord. And it's got a hell brute, which is similar to a dreadnought. So you get two starting forces with it. Now, once you pick up your Dark Vengeance, there's a couple other things you're going to need to pick up on your way home from the store, because you're going to want them handy when you open this box up. First off is a modeling knife. Now, some people like using clippers, and I have nothing against clippers, but whenever I use them, I always end up going over the model again with a, a knife anyways, just to get all the flash and the bits off. So I generally just start right off with the knife. I get nice clean cuts, more control over it, and I picked this one up for like three dollars at my local hobby store. Not very expensive purchase. The next thing you're going to need is some glue. Now these models that come in the basic set are actually designed to just snap together where you don't actually need the glue. I still recommend having some handy though because when I put some together the pieces didn't always line up just the way I'd want them to. And plus, when you're first learning to cut these things off the sprue, some of this plastic can be a little easy to break. So it's very easy to accidentally snap a part off. So you're going to want something to be able to help you fix that. Now, this is the actual Games Workshop glue. This is a pretty old bottle. I've had this a while. But any of my super glue would work. Uh, I use a lot of Zappa Gap. You can pick that up at your local gaming stores. But there's other glues as well. Just talk to the guy at the counter. He'll be able to set you up. Something else I'd either pick up or make sure that you have is a good tape measure. Now, Games Workshop actually has a real fancy one. looks like a servo skull. and There's a lot of ones on the market, but what I really recommend is just a kind of large, kind of brightly colored, and obnoxious tape measure. And the reason for this is as you get playing the game later on and you're going to tournaments and you're sitting there in a room with about 15 other guys all playing the same game, it's nice to have a tape measure that stands out, makes it quick and easy to find when you're looking for it. Because trust me, you're going to lose it during your games. 
It always seems to happen. And you want something easy to find. All right, now you've got your basic stuff. You've got your kit home. What do you do next? Well, you're going to put your models together, and you're going to go to your dining room table, and you're going to play your first couple games. Now that's where this comes in. This is actually an introductory sorry, an introduction to the game. It actually has several scenarios in here to help you learn how to play the game. It kind of takes you through it step by step. I'd recommend just putting your models together, going home and just playing these through these one by one on your own just to kind of learn how the game plays. Now after you've put them together, you've played a couple games, the next thing you want to do is just pick up some basic paints and start painting your models. Now you don't have to be a great artist to be able to play this game. I mean, some artistic talent does help, but like me, I am a terrible painter. I'll be the first one to admit it, but all you really need is a handful of colors on a model, and it'll work. And I do recommend painting your models, even if you're not a great painter. It just really adds to the, the look of the feel of the game when you have two fully painted armies going at each other. Now, if you don't have them all painted right off the bat, your average opponent's going to be okay with that because you'll see that they're a work in progress. And just like mine on here aren't even fully painted. But the next thing, while you're painting the armies, I'd also have you pick up one more tactical squad. Now, I picked up this tactical squad on the internet. I paid less than 15 bucks for them. All I did was pick up another Dark Vengeance squad. And you can find them for sale on the internet pretty cheap. And just with this one additional squad and what came in the box set gives me about a thousand point army. Now there's one other thing you're going to need before you start going to the store to play. And that's a codex. The one I've picked here is the kit is the uh, basic Space Marine Codex. Now there's a lot of different Space Marine Codexes and you could use them with pretty much all of them with this army. I'm going to actually do another video later just about Space Marines. So look for that one. But for now I recommend just getting the basic Space Marine Army. Now you may notice I'm paying specific you know, attention to the Space Marines and not the chaos that come in the box. And I'll tell you why. Space Marines, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, are one of the easiest armies to learn how to play for a new player. A few of those reasons are their stat lines for their models are very similar, meaning that you, it's not very hard to memorize what your different models can do. They also don't have a huge variety of weapons and special rules. They pretty much share them across the army for the most part, also making them very easy to learn. They also have a pretty high point cost per model, meaning it's going to take you less models and less of an investment to get started in the game. So that's why I really recommend just going with the Space Marines in the box, buy one more tactical squad and a codex, and this gives you about a thousand point army. Now what you do next is you go to your local game store, you start talking to the people, you ask them questions about their army. I've learned that almost all Warhammer players are, love to talk about their armies and their projects, kind of get a feel for what they're doing, and then Try to get yourself in a game or two, small 1,000 point games with some of the players that are more friendly. Try to get a little experience in the game. It'll be a little slow at first. Have your rulebook handy. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And just get a few games under your belt. Okay. Now, you've done this. You've played a few games. What's your next step? Your next step is actually figuring out what army will be your army. Now you're saying, hey, Guile, you just had me build 1,000 points of Space Marine. What's up with that? I'll tell you, this was just your starting force. Okay, there's nothing against Space Marines. As I said, I like them. They're a great army to learn from. But they're not always going to be a fit for everybody. So how you decide what army is really going to be your army is by using the ally system. Okay? If you look through the Warhammer book, you're going to find a chart that tells you what armies can work with other armies and ally to them. And the good thing about Space Marines is that they can ally with just about every army in the game. The only exceptions is the Chaos Armies and Tyranids. Now, if you're interested in Tyranids, 
sorry, you're on your own on that one. They can't ally with anybody. You're just going to have to build them up. But if chaos is what you're interested in, guess what? Dark Vengeance comes with a starting chaos force, too. So you already got to jump on that one as well. Now, which army is your army? How do you pick this? Well, first you start reading the fluff. Now, there's some beautiful fluff in this book if you want to pick it up. But if you don't want to, you can go online. There's a variety of websites out there. Um, even Wikipedia has um, uh, fluff novels. There's just tons of stuff out there. You can even buy model uh, novels from the Black Library to read. There's tons of stuff on the fluff of the universe. Start reading them. Start looking at the different races in the game. Finding which stories you like. And then go to the Games Workshop website and start looking at the models. Find the models that you like, the ones that really kind of call to you. Now this is kind of a dangerous time. I've seen people make a big mistake with this one. Where they've gone through, they've read the fluff, and they've looked at the models, and they thought this was all very cool. So they go out and they build a big 2,000 point army right off the bat. And then they start playing it. And the problem with this is not every army is suited to every person's style of play. I've seen people get really excited, build an army, they play a bunch of games, and they just can't get into their army. It just doesn't quite work for them. And I've actually seen a few people get discouraged and quit the hobby. So that's why I say I really would not start out by buying a huge army. What I would do instead is take advantage of that ally system. Now let's say, for example, I'm going to use Eldar in this case. Now you look up here, you got your starting Space Marine Force me the camera a little bit. As I said, you got about a thousand points here. So what would I add? Well, I want to start Eldar. So first thing I would do is I'd buy an HQ. In this case, I'm picking an avatar. I'd get myself some guardians. That's a troop's choice. And I would just tag these guys in my space marines. I'd start playing a few games with them and seeing how I like them. If I like the way the Eldar is playing for me, then I would buy another unit or two. And I'd slowly keep expanding on the Eldar. Now, let's say I decide I don't like the Eldar. They just, they're not working for me. Then I'd, I haven't lost that much. I haven't made a large you know, purchase. I've only got a couple of units. I could put them to the side. Maybe try another army out. Or maybe just stick with Space Marines. Maybe instead of buying another unit. I decide I like these guys. I just start adding to the Space Marines by buying a tank or two. You know, the options are very open. The main thing to remember is, rather than buying an army right off the bat, a huge army making a huge financial expenditure, start slow. Work your way up. Play the small games. Make sure you really enjoy the army that you're fielding, that you enjoy playing it and you like building it and you like the models. And if you like it, you keep building. And if for instance, let's say you are playing these Eldar with your Space Marines and you're really liking them. Well, if you keep buying more and more Eldar, over time, the Space Marines will stop being the primary army and they'll start being the allies to the Eldar. And then as the Eldar continue to grow, eventually you'll get rid of the Space Marines altogether. So, main thing is just take it slow, take it easy, and try to have fun okay and another thing when you're learning some people are going to disagree with me about this but this game it isn't about winning okay then why do you keep score well you keep score because well that's the way we are it's about having fun talking smack with your friends just hanging out around the table you're going to lose it first that's to be expected because you're learning the game don't get discouraged, especially if you're playing with people who have been playing a lot longer than you. It's not your army's fault, but this is a very complex game. It takes time to learn it. It takes time to learn the tricks and the synergy that goes with these units. Just be patient, and you'll pick it up. And before long, you'll start winning games more and more frequently, and then you'll be a force to be reckoned with. Okay? So this is my recommendations for starting off with the game. I do want to make um, a couple more recommendations of things you should buy early on. Now, Dark Vengeance does come with some dice, but very early in picking up this game, 
you're going to want to get yourself a nice brick. Because anyone who plays these games can tell you this ain't going to cut it. Okay. One other thing that's going to be a good friend is a nice calculator. You don't have to get this type, but I would definitely get a nice calculator because you're going to be using the heck out of it. Alright. Now, I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'm going to take a look at all of them. If you have any helpful criticism for me or for possibly the other players who are new to the game, by all means, leave it there. And uh, happy gaming and have fun. Thank you for your time.